Empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup. It becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle. It becomes the bottle. You put in a teapot. It becomes the teapot. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. <laughs> Casting the main character of Sam, I knew it was going to be a challenge to find someone to play the role, and it was going to be a global search. It was a tall order. You're looking for an actor who is compelling and can handle all the drama and vulnerability, but is also really funny, who can also fight. There was just something so introspective, but also like sort of quietly fierce about Andrew, that really just felt right. I never thought I'd be able to play a song because I'd never seen a lead Asian guy on a show before. I'm blessed. I get to do this. Andrew came in. I'm not making any promises. And he blew us away. This is why you want to tell these stories. You want to find people who come in and seize it. And in many ways, that is, to me, kind of embodies what Bruce Lee is all about. <laughs> Casting the show, we looked all over the world, and we found Koji in England, we found Jason in Hong Kong, we found Joe in Indonesia, we found Diane in LA, we found Olivia in Canada, and we have Hoon Lee, who played Joe on Banshee. My goal with this show was to have an interweaving story for 11 or 12 characters, but it felt really important to me to include both the police force and the mayor and the executive branch. Jonathan had quite a huge vision for this show. He wanted to find that kind of balance between, you know, style, pulp, and the period. This show exists in its own universe. We did a few things to just really make sure that there was a signature look and feel to the show so it couldn't be mistaken for a historical docudrama, which is why you see Tang members wearing Armani suits. The wardrobe is really interesting on this show because on one hand, you don't want people looking like they just walked out of 2019, but at the same time, you wanted to have that contemporary feel. In this era, in fashion, it is an absolutely hot, Thing at the moment for Asian and Western fashion to sort of fuse using period and mixing it with, with some contemporaries, which was really, really exciting. And then the extra challenge for all the characters who fight, they had to be able to move in their clothes. It feels weird to fight in a suit. It looks good. <laughs> so they really had to figure out, like, OK, how do these guys look really cool, look true to period, but have a sort of postmodern flair, and not split their pants? <laughs> The wardrobe is highly fashionable. There's huge trains, there's corsets and jewelry. They've been incredibly open and willing and eager to discuss the aspects of character that would inform costume. Every piece has a story. What colors my ling would wear, what sleeve shapes. It gives you a kind of deportment that we don't have in modern life. You know, they'd walk in a certain way. They'd wear the gloves, the hats, the stick. And then suddenly you see them walking around on the set. That's when it started to feel really real. We knew that we wanted this world to be very tactile. And so that meant that we would have to build. Recreating 1878 San Francisco, you're going to be starting from scratch. And then there was a lot of discussion about scale and the scope of what we were going to be able to create for a back lot. For 24 hours, we just sat talking about we have to build a set that we can reuse. The Chinatown back lot we've built has multiple streets and alleyways which can be redressed and make it feel like an entire city. It's pretty remarkable. We built hills, we have Chinatown streets, we have Irish town. The fact that the set is so cool comprehensive and so detailed. You don't have to expend any extra energy. You just are in this world. We tried to avoid having green screens and blue screens all over the place. The thing that struck me when I first stepped on the back lot was not only this replica of San Francisco Chinatown, but also the care that set deck had taken with even populating food stands with real food and real smells. You make use of a lot of the historic buildings in Cape Town as well. We shot at City Hall. The photographs I've seen of San Francisco 140 years ago, pretty accurate. The opening scene of the pilot, it's a Sam walking off the boat in blackness, and we kind of knew that that shot was key. You see the door open and you see America. And this is an American story, and we are experiencing what it feels like for our hero coming into this world.
I like to think that Bruce Lee, if he saw the show, he would be proud. I think we made a very concerted effort to celebrate why he was doing it, what he was trying to do. There's just so much care and love in this work. It's pretty mind-blowing, and I'm, I'm just grateful to be here. It's an action series, but with heart, with a message, style, and substance. You've got fantastic storyline, you've got a great narrative, you've got huge characters. The show itself, it's a melting pot, which is what America really is. The history of this show being an idea that Bruce Lee created, it's such an honor and a privilege. I mean, just don't tell the little kid I was that my name is coming right after Bruce Lee's name on a TV show because I just don't think I ever would have believed that's possible. Bruce Lee, I'm eternally grateful to that man because I'm somehow here right now because of him. To take my father's idea, give it life, give it a voice, adding to his legacy, to be able to correct some Hollywood wrongs, to cast an Asian cast that is so talented, it's an amazing moment. I always learn something, and that is to be always yourself and to express yourself, to have faith in yourself. Do not go out and look for a successful personality and duplicate him.